Les chiens sont nos amis depuis des millénaires. Ils vivent à nos côtés, nous donnent un amour inconditionnel et peuvent faire de magnifiques compagnons pour la vie. Aujourd'hui, il existe plus de 400 races de chiens, chacune avec ses propres caractéristiques et apparences. Certaines races ont la face courte. Nous appelons ces chiens brachycéphales. Ces chiens sont considérés par beaucoup comme mignons et comme ayant de fortes personnalités. Beaucoup de ces races à nez court sont très populaires, ce qui rend de nombreux propriétaires très heureux. La façon dont beaucoup d'entre eux ronflent, allaient et luttent pour respirer peut sembler drôle à beaucoup de gens. Mais ce n'est pas drôle pour les chiens. Ces chiens ne sont ni en bonne santé ni heureux. Ils souffrent et luttent pour respirer toute leur vie. Beaucoup ont besoin d'une intervention chirurgicale pour survivre et parfois même mourir du syndrome des voies respiratoires obstructives brachycéphales ou BOAS, encore appelé SORBE en français. Il est cruel de continuer à élever délibérément des chiens affectés par le BOAS qui vivent souvent une vie de souffrance et d'essoufflement constant. Brachycephaly means the shape of the skull is shorter than usual. Because of exaggerated anatomical features, many short nostrils suffer from devastating medical conditions. It can mean narrow nostrils in French bulldogs, compressed and thickened nasal sinuses, long of palace in pugs, and narrow wing piping in English bulldogs. All of the structures are still there, but the box becomes much smaller. The structures simply do not fit anymore. The shape of the eyes and extreme skin folds can cause eye problems. A short muscle can cause dental disease due to teeth overcrowding. These drugs may also have chronic ear infections from tight ear canals, chronic vomiting from labor breathing, and difficulty giving birth because of the large heads. But most serious is their difficulty to breathe. This we call BOAS, the brachycephaly obstructive airway syndrome. We are, as veterinarians, well suited to recognize dogs with a compromised breathing function that makes it possible to exclude them from breeding. But to implement a wise breeding selection of these dogs, that is not enough. There must also be an urge to select dogs with less exaggerated anatomical features that may result in compromised or impaired breathing function. To achieve that, we must all work together, not only veterinarians, but all the other stakeholders, the breeders, the show judges, and the media, to implement or influence the perception of a dog of these breeds with less exaggerated anomical features, so that they will have a happy life together. Nous devons influencer de manière collaborative la perception d'un chien en bonne santé par rapport à un chien avec des caractéristiques anatomiques exagérées ou hypertypées. La sélection de chiens reproducteurs en bonne santé avec des caractéristiques moins exagérées est nécessaire pour que ce trouble ne soit pas transmis à la progéniture. Dogs should be able to run outside without labored breathing, eat without gasping for breath, and sleep without obstructing. We can improve the life of the individual dog with surgery, but this is not the solution. The answer lies with health-focused breeding. Less extreme is better when it comes to exaggerated conformation in dogs. This is a pug, and with a camera we are looking at the entrance of the windpipe. You can see that the entrance is nearly fully blocked, and the dog needs to work really hard to get the air in. This is a French bulldog, and we are looking at his nose we can see that his nostrils are almost completely blocked. This dog can hardly get air in, therefore to get air in it may have to keep its mouth open, which is not normal for any dog. This is a radiograph of a bulldog's windpipe and that of a similarly sized dog. To the left you see what a windpipe should look like and to the right you see a very narrowed windpipe. This is the case in some bulldogs and other short-nosed breeds. You can imagine that it's very difficult to get air into your lungs through a pipe that is too narrow. Ineas Health describes whether dogs are born with the physical capacity to be healthy. 
Sadly, however, many short-nosed dogs are born with very poor innate health due to their extreme physical features, such as shortened nose, bulging eyes, large head, folded skin, and lack of tail. Average lifespan is a widely used and reliable summary measure of overall lifetime health. However, research shows that popular short-nosed dog breeds such as French Bulldogs, Pugs and English Bulldogs on average die before eight years of age, living just two thirds of the typical life of other breeds such as Labrador Retrievers or crossbreeds, which can expect to live up to around 12 years. Boas and breathing problems in general are more than 30 times more likely in French Bulldogs, English Bulldogs and Pugs than in dogs from other breeds. Overweight and obesity are recognized to worsen Boas across all breeds, contributing to approximately 50% of the variation. Owners can improve their short-nosed dog's health by keeping them slim and fit. La popularité croissante de certaines races à face courte a transformé la brachycéphalie et le boas en une crise internationale du bien-être canin. Au cours des 20 dernières années, le désir de posséder des bulldogs français est devenu viral dans le monde entier, les bulldogs français étant désormais la race la plus couramment achetée dans de nombreux pays, dépassant même le Labrador Retriever. Les bulldogs anglais et les carlins ont également gagné en popularité. The issue is so driven by human demand. The extreme traits in these dogs came about through selection aimed at what is by many people seen as a charming look. These breeds did not historically have extremely short noses, but these have evolved through selection over numerous generations. Traditionally, the effort to select these dogs has been led by kennel clubs that issued pedigrees based on performance at dog shows. However, now a large part of the breeding takes place outside the kennel clubs. For example, in Denmark, my own country, currently only 12% of French Bulldogs acquired have a pedigree. So it is necessary to address the potential dog owners who create the demand for these dogs. Unfortunately, this has led to a situation in which these dogs suffer from their conformation. In my view, it is urgent to try to redress these issues. It is cruel and unethical to continue breeding dogs who cannot breathe normally. Nous devons changer notre comportement et faire passer la santé et le bien-être des chiens en premier, peu importe à quel point ils sont géniaux ou mignons. Pas pour nous, mais pour eux. Boas is hugely underrecognized by owners and veterinary professionals. Many see these problems as normal for the breed, finding the snuffling and snorting breathing sounds cute rather than concerning, and exercise challenges convenient for those that don't wish to walk their dogs too much. Studies show that owners of short-nosed dogs are highly attached to them and will buy them again, even if their previous dog had health issues related to its looks. It's vital that people understand if their dogs are suffering and don't unintentionally celebrate their struggles. Selective breeding has created a short-nosed dog whose health has been compromised in search of cuteness. Selective breeding can also return these breeds to a more moderate anatomical conformation and also to normal breathing. Some of the mutations associated with the shortened face are now fixed in the mutant form in each breed. Outcrossing to a different breed can revert these mutations. But we know that some members of each brachycephalic breed do not have BOAS, showing that these mutations are not by themselves enough to confer the disease syndrome. Anatomical benchmarks, such as muscle length measurements have not been able to separate BOAS affected dogs from unaffected dogs adequately. But studies do show that there is a correlation 
between more extreme traits and BOAS. Therefore, whilst continuing research towards a better genetic understanding of the disease, we need to select away from exaggerated anatomical features. We need to take into account that each dog has several different anatomical components contributing to their disease state, and that these components also vary between breeds. Breeders must select for more moderate muzzle length and nasal openings. However, an even more direct way to select against inheritance of bias is to measure the labored breathing that accompanies it directly. BOAS is a disease of airway function, and it can be tested most effectively using functional traits. Respiratory function tests have now been introduced to many countries around the world. They are based on a veterinary examination of a dog at rest, and again after a brisk walk, and they can differentiate dogs that can breathe normally from those who are compromised. We need breeders to engage in health-focused breathing and for the public to look for results of these tests. If the argument is, why can't I breed my short-nosed dog? Part of the answer will be because the functional test shows they cannot breathe properly with moderate exercise. If breeders do not have the access to these tests, then they need to realistically assess whether their prospective breeding dogs can perform a brisk walk for several minutes without labouring to breathe or having noisy breathing caused by obstruction. If affected dogs are not used for breeding, then the breathing function of the next generation of dogs will improve. This will require losing a portion of the breed populations from breeding, but these are populous breeds and the loss of BOAS affected dogs from breeding will improve the overall health of the breeds. We veterinarians see short nosed dogs presenting with the symptoms of a gasping for breath in a heat stroke. In many cases, we are unable to save them. And this is significant animal welfare issue and can be avoided by selective and ethical breeding. Many dog breed clubs around the world recognize the issue with a brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome and have embraced a respiratory function testing for all short face breeds like pug, English and French Bulldogs and Pekingese. By educating the breeders and owners, we can improve the respiratory health of these short nose breed dogs and allow them to live a comfortable life. Il est clair qu'il s'agit d'une problématique complexe. Elle implique de nombreuses parties prenantes, telles que les clubs canins internationaux et nationaux, les clubs de race ainsi que les juges lors d'expositions canines, les vétérinaires, les propriétaires de chiens et futurs propriétaires de chiens, les métiers, les gouvernements et les autorités, les organisations de protection des animaux et les médias. Dans la plupart des pays, la grande majorité des chiens à face courte ne sont pas enregistrés auprès d'un club canin et sont légalement et illégalement commercialisés sur de longues distances, y compris en traversant les frontières. Par conséquent, le simple fait d'interdire une race ne résoudra pas le problème. Despite attention, awareness and actions to counteract them, we are still faced with these problems. And now in even greater numbers because of a dramatic rise in the popularity of the type of dogs at risk. We should realize that there is no easy and quick solution by one stakeholder in just one country. If that would have been possible, we would have solved it by now. We should acknowledge the complexity and accept that the only sustainable way forward is if all stakeholders work together internationally and act nationally, taking social, economic and cultural differences into account. Only together can we make this work to the benefit of short-nosed dogs whose lives depend on us. Breeders did not purposefully select for dogs with impaired breathing, 
but unintentionally, they did create this serious health issue. Breeders should select breeding stock with less exaggerated features and perform pre-breeding genetic health assessments, including respiratory function tests. This will reduce the frequency of BOAS, as well as other hereditary diseases, and allow for healthier dogs. If looking to acquire a short-nosed dog, prospective owners must ask breeders what actions they have taken to prevent BOAS in their puppies. The parents and puppies should breathe without obvious noise, have open nostrils, and a functional muzzle. No dog should snore, and all should be able to run and breathe freely. Selective breeding can return these breeds to more moderate anatomical conformation and normal breathing. Health-focused breeding produces healthy puppies. These dogs are our companions, and their lives depend on us. We can't let them down. All dogs deserve to live healthy lives. The World Small Animal Veterinary Association has produced this video to bring attention to the public on the devastating effects of brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome seen in short-nosed dogs. We all love our dogs, but sometimes we need to stop and recognize the serious health issues that has been created and work together to restore the health to these breeds. On peut partager différentes opinions, on peut le voir sous différents angles, mais nous devons surpasser nos différences personnelles. Car si nous ne le faisons pas, ce sont les chiens qui en souffrent en fin de compte. Joignons nos forces et travaillons ensemble pour renverser cette tendance pour un avenir plus sain et plus heureux pour tous les chiens.